Hey guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on Fortran programming. Now in the last tutorial, we were work, we completely we successfully completed our successor for factorial program and uh, in this tutorial, we'll I'll be uh, telling you guys a little more uh, details regarding uh, some factors that you have to consider while doing a do loop and uh, we'll talk about labels also. Now, what does what are the factors to be considered in do loop is as follows. First of all, First of all, the do loops should be, should be sandwiched inside each other. Now, what does that mean? I'll tell you like this. I'll tell you for. I'll tell you this. In Genie and other editors, if you have a reasonably good interactive uh, development environment editors like Genie or maybe more than that, there's this feature. There's this feature like this called as a collapse feature. Okay, this collapse feature helps you to know which which feature is inside which feature and all. Now, the what I mean by sandwich is that. Whenever you write a do loop or a nested do loop, one loop should lie completely inside the other other loop. And if this feature is not being obeyed properly, then your then the result will not and then then the program will throw an error and will not run properly. So that is first that is the first thing you have to consider. Second thing you have to consider is that you can use the values of the iterating variable, but it should not be the values of the iterating variable should not be modified. For instance. In this loop, what I know, what I feel, what I can say is that uh, i value. I'm not. I'm just using the value of i, but I'm not changing the value of i. Similarly, in this inside this j inside this lo do loop, I'm using the value of j, but I'm not modifying the value of j. Similarly, here I'm just using the value of i, but I'm not modifying the value of i. So as far as this goes by, you can use very well the iterating variables, but you cannot uh, modify the variables inside. For instance, uh, let me just keep i equals one. Now I I just set i equals four in a certain loop. If I just uh, raise this up, compile this, it will throw me an error. Look at the, if it shows an error saying that error variable i at one, where this is one, this is showing at one cannot be redefined inside loop beginning at two. So this is the warning. I mean, this is another one. This is an error. It won't let you comp. It won't even let you compile. So this is a compilation error, which you have to fix this. Otherwise, it won't let. It's a kind of an error. It's a it's a big error in Fortran. So what you have to do is that this, if this being said, i that value of i cannot be modified inside its own loop. Outside the mo loop, it can mo you can modify it n number of times. It doesn't matter. But inside the loop, where if, where it is being used as an iterating variable, i cannot be modified. Okay, so if I were to comment this and compile this, it works fine, no problem. Now on the other hand, okay, if I were to modify j, suppose I said j equals j equals three, okay, to compile this, it won't throw me an error. Why so? Because j is local to this loop, and outside this loop, you uh, outside of this loop, j has no conditions on it. Okay, so this works fine. This 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 won't throw me an error. So this I'll say this as an error. This as no error. Okay. Now here, suppose if I were to make uh, this statement, i equals one. I equals one. You know, I'm intentionally modif trying to modify this here again. If I compile this, it will throw me the same error because i though it's inside this j loop, it is also this entire j loop is inside i. So Implicit, indirectly, or implicitly, i is also inside i. I, this i is also inside this i loop. This i, this do loop with having i. So this is not accepted. If I were to compile, compile this after commenting this out, it's fine. And uh, if I try to do the same thing I did over there, j equals uh, three. Okay, now throw me an error, as as early as before. But if I were to, you uh, you know, comment this out. This won't throw me an error. So I just type no error. Now if I were to compare this, no issues, uh, no issues whatsoever. And if I do that, okay, uh, since i is, j is being reassigned here, it doesn't matter what j holds. Whatever value it holds above will be just removed, will be just wiped off and set over here. So these are the cautions you have to take inside uh, using do loops and all. And next thing I want to tell you guys is about the labels. Now, what a label is, as the as the name suggests, it's just a name 
are a kind of a label for the for the statements now labels are most preferably used for looping statements and other uh, decision making statements now if you want to write a loop right if you want to write a label whatever you do just give a name like uh, outer outer do outer do loop something like that and then to make sure that this is a loop you give this colon symbol similarly if you want if i want to give an inner if i want to give a inner state uh, label for this loop i can write something like inner do loop and give a colon and separate this out as simple as that but this la label convention comes up with a, a slight consequence see once you start naming them okay okay if you just print if you just compile this it will throw a lot of warnings stating that uh, an expected end do is occurring expected end do is occurring and unexpected unexp unexpected end file and a uh, lot of stuff now what does this mean is that if you guys notice it's underlining all the end do statements and end program statements stating that there is some kind of an error we but we didn't notice any error in the previous condition so what does this mean it means that uh, initially when the do loops do not have a name the compiler know kn knows how to terminate them and how to terminate them properly and all it assumes on its own but it which works out to be fine but as in when the naming conventions are given now you have to explicitly define where each loop is ending now now to make sure this works properly i have to sorry i i thought it's i typed inner it's inter i thought i thought i thought it was inner it's actually you know it's inter i type inner inner do loop okay and then i type uh out uh, outer do loop okay now this indicate this indicates that the inner loop starts here and ends here and this indicates the outer loop starts here and ends here if you guys notice this is just like the program name i gave a program name here i'm ending with the program name here just like that just like that now if i were to compile this no errors okay now if i told you that the one the loop has to be sandwiched in between the loops right now what if i do not sandwich if i just you know i write this as outer 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 and i write this as in inner okay now but as per this as per the naming conventions the compiler will assume that the compiler will take the outer do loop to end here and the inner do, inner do loop to end here so they are overlapping each other they are not going they are not inter they are not you know uh, sandwich inside they are actually overlapping each other so if i were to compile this it will throw an error it will throw an error stating that uh, unexpected looping unexpected uh, endings endings are coming up okay and it's not matching up with how things are going over here and all okay now that being said this is how uh, now that being said this is an indication that uh, you know you should not uh, have you should not have overlapping loops but the one loop should be inside the other or nested in short okay loops can be nested but it cannot be uh, you know uh, the loops can be nested but it cannot be overlapping with other loops and that's the thing over here if i were to rectify that issue rectify this issue and then compile this it works uh, no, no error no error i build this no error i just execute this i just type you know say 10 there you have it it works fine the program is working fine perfect now the thing is we don't need this statement so i just comment this out and then save it no problem i just compile build and ex uh, sorry i just execute this 10 perfect that print slash print statement just goes away no problem and that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial and this is how naming conventions for labels have to be done and all this naming convention for label can be used for if statements switch case statements and other statements also and other decision looping and decision making statements also but even you guys use this use with caution okay that's the kind that's the motor motor behind here and uh, thank you guys for watching that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial see you guys next time bye